What's up, y'all? So this is going to be a re-release of the I Me and Hers video. Well, this one's going to have a part two that you can catch on Drillers of Philly's YouTube channel. Where he's going to go more into I Me and Hers personal life and what he got into before he got accused of four murders. Old school, red brick, syndicate, count my money and test. I live on the edge. I seen the eye been fair. This ain't wrestling, you're not getting spared. Moving on ice, I feel like I'm scared. Red, niggas fear, I'm on a tear. All the eyes, dude, scared. You trying to get on, I'm already here. Trying to get on, bro. You trying to get on, I'm on the On Christmas Eve 2020, 20 year old Day Woo Scruggs, known on social media as Woo Biddy, was chased for about a block before being gunned down. Around 11 a.m., a police video shows a man following Woo Biddy, or Skinny is what people actually called him. The video starts showing Woo Biddy, then points out that more than a block behind him is a person basically stalking him. It appears at one point he calls his name because you can see Woo Biddy turn around. Then Woo picks up his pace and after turning around again, he starts a slow jog. The killer then starts to run after him. He catches up with him at Malvern and Winwood. Then Woo Biddy was an inspiring Philadelphia comedian who liked to talk shit, bid, and make people laugh, and generally just seemed like a young man trying to find his way. He also had a habit of getting into little spats and arguments on Instagram with other comedians and people from the city, but mostly he seemed harmless. Sweaty was solid, but really ain't shit. Niggas bullying around the way he start telling them he a snitch. Then I'm aced without the telling they trying. Hey, up there, show up. Get me in double. But aced without the telling he's trying to fall like this. <laughs> <laughs> he always trying to promote violence. He trying to beef. He trying to get ops on my live. He on the live like this. First of all, if I was coming for you, where everybody see me? Social media went crazy, posting videos that exaggerated the situation, mostly with people from other cities, clickbait and titles for views. Shout out to End the Sentence and 1090 Jake for putting some thought into the situation, at least from an out of town perspective. Nobody called me, nobody hit me up. It's 63rd, fuck Tuka, fuck Duck, fuck all them. You already know, full block shit. You know, long little grandson, V Roy and T Roy. And can't forget, heck, f your tub. First quarter, I looked at this in an entirely different way than what was being portrayed by people online trying to pull views and attention. Skinny had posts on his Instagram and was obviously a fan of Chicago music, but I've never heard of gangs in Philly, and I doubted he had any ties to the BDGD war in Chicago. Not only that, but Skinny was from Frankfurt. A neighborhood in Northeast Philly where he graduated high school and played football. Before he even posted the Chicago shit, he said these West dudes want to be my ops. Man, I only deal with Frankfurt shit. It don't involve me if it ain't Frankfurt. Run when we shoot. <laughs> you, ass nigga, you can't run when we shoot. I'm gonna smoke you. <laughs> Real shit. <laughs> So obviously he has something going on in his own city and going on with West Philly, but still decided to walk through there. Not only that, he's saying fuck 63rd, which many are assuming he's talking about FBG Doug's block. But to me, it sounded as if he's subliminally dissing someone else and it made sense when I peeped the map. Winewood Road sits between 64th and 63rd and he got killed not even a block away from 63rd. And I might just be overthinking it, but to me, it looks like he was sneak dissing whoever from the West decided to walk through 63rd, taking a side street, and was either recording a video on his ops block or pulled out his phone when he got ran down on, thinking recording the shooter was going to save him from getting shot. When you add all that up, it doesn't sound like he was a random comedian that was killed. It sounds like he was in some shit or was acting like it and fell victim.
Three months later, on March 11th, 2021, four people were shot at around 3 p.m. on North 76th Street between Woodbine and Malvern Avenue. Naquan Smith, 24, was dead by 3.15. Tamir Brown, who was only 16, died later that evening. Two additional people were in critical condition but have luckily survived. They were both 19 years old. I couldn't find much more info on this situation as of this recording. Anybody who's been to jail in Philadelphia knows this viewpoint. It's probably one of the worst feelings in the world uh, looking at this, sitting on that bus, waiting for that gate to open. Likewise, if you've ever been to jail in Philadelphia, this viewpoint is probably one of the best feelings in the world. After spending a day, a week, two months, up to three years sitting in that jail, this is probably one of the best feelings there is. Looking at this view, walking out that jail, you feel like you're on top of the world. The final killing occurred on March 18th. Victim Rodney Hargrove, 20, was gunned down an hour after his father bailed him out of CFCF at one in the morning. Hargrove waited for his folks to pick him up at the bus stop near the jail, then ran back to the jail when a vehicle started chasing him. He was killed just feet from the raised gate of the complex. The Philadelphia Police Department said that they believe Hargrove was killed in the case of mistaken identity. I'm not so sure about that though. The fact that he was killed just after being released seemed like it would be too random at, the t at that time in the morning. And being that State Road is far from anything going on in the city, it just seems unlikely. An internal security probe is trying to figure out why the jail's gate was raised when Hargrove ran back. More details are to come. Now a couple of things to be said here. One, why are they releasing people in the middle of the night with no money and no personal belongings? Two. The city knows the buses stop running around midnight and that the nearest running bus is at least 30 minutes walk. They provide two tokens which are useless if you're older, disabled, or unable to walk for 30 minutes for whatever reason. Over the years, more than half of the prisoners released from State Road were discharged outside of his 9am to 9pm weekday cashier's office hours. So this means you put them on the street without any ID, cash, phone, or none of they shit. People released on the weekend can't access the cashier's office until 9 a.m. Monday, which can be a huge problem for some people. There's a man that happens to be homeless at the moment who lives by the prison facility that's providing bus schedules and phone calls with his cell phone to stranded releases. The city can definitely do better, at least have a bus that takes people to the transportation center after they're released. On March 20th, 2021, 16-year-old Amin Hurst was arrested and charged as an adult in the murder of Wu Biddy. Police used facial recognition software to identify Hurst. A month later, he was charged with the other three murders and two attempted murders with 32 separate charges in all. A mass shooter is defined as a minimum of four victims shot, either injured or killed, not including the shooter who may have been killed or injured in an incident. A serial killer is typically a person who murders three or more people with the murders taking place over more than a month and including a significant period of time between them. While most authorities set a threshold of three murders, others extend it to four or lessen it to two. Now, it's hard to say exactly what happened to this young boy that turned him into a menace to society. I don't know what his personality is like at all, but for what I could piece together, his mom did some time in jail when he was younger and his pop did a little stretch somewhere in there too. But going from a little boy with a big smile to a 16 year old with a big gun, something went left somewhere. There's videos of him getting choked at St. Gabe's, a youth detention program. You gotta be bad as shit to be sent there. So, folks in and out of jail, getting in fights and losing in front of people on camera, growing up in poverty. He probably had the worst influences the hood's got to offer in his ear, gassing him up because it's unlikely he did all this by himself. 
It was definitely somebody with him when he allegedly murked Rodney Hargrove. Also, his father died earlier last year, which I know from first-hand experience can be soul-crushing. I'm not trying to make him look good or for people to have sympathy for him, but just trying to figure out what the hell happened here. How he went from this to this. I mean, Hearst is innocent until proven guilty and no trial date is set at the moment. Hey man, I wanna build a community on this channel by bringing you stories like this. I'ma have some positive things on here too, but Philly's a fucked up city right now. I don't know what the city is gonna do about this. They announce community updates every two weeks, but so far it's just the police doing slideshows of crime stats. The mayor and city lawmakers need to be hands on with this because it might be too late for some in this generation, but before you know it, it's gonna be my kids' turn and maybe your kids to make this shit different. If you like what you see and want more STV Philly, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, tell me what I should cover in the future. The AR ad video is going to be kind of long, and OVH has got a lot of shit to go through. Plus, I like to be thorough and have all the facts straight. I'm going to catch y'all on the next video.